Hi, my name is Cheyenne Boris, or my friends call me Java, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to communicate and go live or record how to make a drink while still connecting with your audience. Today we are going to show you how to make a French press drink. Now I am what you would call a coffee snob, so this way might be a little more let's say articulate or scientific, you can of course show the simplistic way of making this, but if you are more of like, you wanna be a little fancy schmancy, this is the way to do it. So I am gonna do all of the measurements in the grams because with food sources, sometimes grams just seem to do better scientifically when it comes to acidity and of course the proper pour. So you'll hear me reference grams. If you feel free to do the conversion in a conversion calculator if that's easier for you. All measurements are gonna be on my little tiny handy dandy scale that I got through Java Mama at one point and this thing is a life saver. And now I'm over here with the audience but also give yourself those pauses, how I just did. I needed a pause to kind of think things through. With editing, you can do that. Now with live, you can't. So if you prefer to go live when doing drink demos, keep in mind that accidents will happen. You'll See, like that accident where my timer ran out. Those happen. You go with it, you go with the flow, become the comedic relief. It is 100% accurate that if people are laughing at you, you might as well crack a joke. That's the motto I live by. And if something happens that they do a little giggle, you'll be like, yep, that was awkward. But how are we gonna, how are we gonna recover? Recovery is so important when you're doing lives or uh, demos or something of that nature. My first live ever, my beagle mix decided he wanted to sit in my lap. So he jumped over the desk, got in my lap and knocked everything down. And we laughed, we kept going. And now he's kind of like a little fun every time they see him in a live. His name's Harrison Ford, they call him Harry. They're always like, Harry, there you are. So that's the fun of it. Let's get into our French press though. I'm doing this recorded where I can edit because that's where I feel comfortable, but find what works for you. If you find it boring to talk to yourself like this, then go live, learn how to adjust and kind of be like, oh, hey, you know, hey girl, I see you in here. What's up? Do you like drinking? Make communication, make that connection. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started with our French press and we're gonna start with 30 grams of coffee. I went ahead and pre-ground this because my grinder is loud. It's attached to a very big espresso machine. Now I recommend a coarse or a French press grind, but I did a little finer and there's a reason and it's selfish and that is because I want to keep the espresso mud, the mud cake that it keeps after the end of brewing. I'm gonna keep that for a later use. I would recommend a coarser grind for using a French press. We're gonna follow the 115 ratio and I'll talk about the science of that a little later, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and grind. This is a blend of espresso with Rainforest Crunch. So I still get that espresso, but I still get that delicious nuttiness. And we're gonna go ahead and move that to the side and you're gonna think, why? Now this is the fancy way. You don't have to do it this way, but here's what we're gonna do. Now I'm all about science in the sense of food. I used to bake for many years. I used to do those things. So to get a proper pour and a proper roast, I recommend preheating your French press. Why? Why do we need to do that? Well, have you ever thought you're putting hot into a cold object? Now, putting a preheat on your French press by just putting some hot water in it, giving it a couple, couple pumperoos, um, you are preheating that vessel. That's not only going to give you a better roast, it's gonna release those oils better, it's also gonna keep the longevity of your French press so there's no cracks, breaks, or damage. You would hate to be live and that French press explodes in your face. Let's be real. So go ahead and preheat it. I'm just using some coffee pot water. So if you see the coloration, that's why. But we're just gonna give it a couple slow plunges with some hot water in there. Let it preheat up. And then if you want, you can use this water again to brew it. You don't have to dump it out just because you preheated your vessel with it. Now that our French press is all preheated, we're gonna go ahead and mix in our nice coffee grounds. So you're gonna put those in right in the bottom, make it look gorgeous, we love it. And then we're gonna add that one to 15 ratio. So going off grams, it's 450. It's the conversion is not my strong suit. I always use grams, so conversion calculator all the way, but it is 450 grams. So we're gonna go ahead and put the top on to retain the heat in the French press. So we're gonna keep it just like this. We're gonna retain that heat in there, keep it all nice and cozy. And we're actually gonna do that for three and a half minutes. 
I'm doing this all based upon the science of the coffee bean and why do we need to do these things? If we preheat that, we are giving it the best shot at a clean roast. If we are letting it retain heat for three and a half minutes, what we're doing is we are giving it an opportunity to breathe, to open, to bloom, to release all of those oils and tasty deliciousness that we are known for in our coffee to come out. So we wanna do that. So while that's going, it's a perfect time to put our coffee together. We are doing, like I said, an espresso and rainforest crunch blend. So we've got that nutty, that buttery. Then we're going to go in with skinny syrup, vanilla almond. You might be new to these, but I've, I've known these for quite some time. As you can see, we usually have about 80 to 100 syrups open at a time in my house. So we're, we're quite fans. <laughs> so you can do that per preference, how many you want in there. One pump, two pump, three pump, four. And you can do however you want. This is a great time to talk to your customers. What's your favorite skinny syrup? Why do you like it? Have you started using it? Implement these new items in to your coffee so that you have an opportunity to talk about it. Now we're doing that vanilla almond and that nutty and that buttery, but we're also going to do, I know, a non-dairy pumpkin creamer. This is pumpkin spice latte because I can make like a pumpkin muffin coffee. So we're gonna froth this up, but I'm gonna do it at 170 um, and we're gonna do all the way up the highest froth possible. So basically I have an electronic frother attached to my my, my machine here, but you can do a hand frother. You can do so many ways to froth milk. Now, I like the luxury of recording and editing because my milk's going right now. There's not much I can do. It's loud. I cannot talk to my customers during this part. I can be quiet, reflect, get ready, but if you were live, I highly suggest you move away from that and you have a conversation. Now, there's a couple of things I wanna talk about, but let's wait for the milk to be done. So I'm known because I do true crime and coffee time usually on my TikTok. So I'll make a drink and I'll talk about a true crime that is something going on or something that happened on that day. And I do that every day. Well, every day I have one, but almost every day. So find something that works for you that connects you to your audience. Now, there's a lot of gaps when making a drink. Like I said, I would be not doing anything during this time, but you could connect to your audience. If you, you know, read a devotional every day, you can read a devotional as you make a drink. If you are really into sports, you can sit and talk about sports. Find your community. You can, my husband's a big fisherman, you can go and go out on a pond or a lake and just show how easy it is to take coffee on the go and just relax and talk. Sometimes we are so business-minded that we forget that we're talking to actual people. So it's okay to find what works for you, mine's true crime and coffee time, and to make a drink as you discuss something. It doesn't have to be always oh, well, coffee, 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 coffee. When you make that relationship during that drink building, they'll continue to come and then they'll talk about it and they'll wanna learn more and they'll ask questions. Now, I like to take the lid off before I plunge and do a quick stir and scoop off some of that excess foam. It just gives it a cleaner taste. This is an optional kind of preference step that you don't have to do, but once you're done doing that, what you can do is plunge. And then you just plunge slowly, giving it a chance to lower. And then doing it this route, your coffee actually will be ready to rock and roll once it plunges all the way to the bottom. So it's kind of quick, effective, and also a very clean roast. Now our syrup's in, our coffee's in, and here comes our cream as we can dine on like a perfect cup of coffee. French presses are so universal on the go, a quick cup of joe, <laughs> or just a really clean roast. Thank you guys.